my neighbors. <laughs> I can sleep. The chicken fry up early and I got to eat. Go, go, go. I stay woke. I stay woke. I stay woke. <laughs> I stay woke. I am up. I stay woke. I don't sleep. I stay woke. <laughs> Good evening, my good folks around the world. It's your friendly neighborhood supervillain, occasionally superhero, JB, uh, with my compadre, Jason. What up, what up? As that's in, uh, behind the cameras. We're missing our co-pilots. Uh, Julie couldn't be here today, and I guess Danny's saving the world. What the fuck is a star boy? I don't know. Is it like a rocket man? Kinda. Like- is a star boy like a... Ageless version of Bowie? I guess. Kind of? <laughs> I wonder if he gets to the church on time. Uh, that's a new single from uh, The Weeknd. It's called Starboy with Daft Punk. Yeah. Yeah. I love The Weeknd, right? I love Daft Punk, too. I want to love that. I hope it becomes, you know, the shit. It, it's not well, for me. And what, what, what do you think? No, I think I I think it's easy to listen to. It's nice to listen to, but it's yeah, it's not a groovy. Like, yeah, it's yeah. not like I don't do groovy drugs. I don't drink groovy. Gro- yeah. When I drank, I didn't drink groovy drinks. You know, I kind of need a little more edge. But it's the weekend. He's proved he's proven over and over again. So let's. It's let's a be- good anticipation album. Yeah, or anticipation record. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure there's some some hidden punches in there. Some some aces in the holes, if I might say so myself. Um, a lot's been going on this week. Have you been keeping up on everything? Uh, no. I don't blame you. Yeah, <laughs> neither have I. Uh, <laughs> I've been enjoying my disconnect. <laughs> um, I I don't concern myself with situations I'm not very familiar with. I don't even really talk about situations I am familiar with. But there are a few things I am going to talk about. Philly, we got to do better, y'all. Two on five. North, south, west Philly. I don't know what the fuck they call East Philly. I never, you know, <laughs> but uh, we got to do better. We really got to do better. I don't know about the internal politics. I'm not going to name any names. I wasn't there. I just know what the internet has shown us. And if you're not there, you're, on, you're, you're obviously manipulated. But if any of that visual shit or any of this, whatever, we got to do better, Philly. Philly, we're the only place on the East Coast that isn't really... You know what I'm saying? We've only got like a few. We got Will Smith. We had Schooly D before Will Smith. Then we had Beans. Stay prop. Now we got me, Dream Chasers. We got to do better with the unity. Everybody squabbles. We got to do better. I'm not even going to make fun of this shit, bro. It's not just on some real, some real life shit, some beyond street shit, man. Like, got to do better. You know what I'm saying? On all sides. I'm not taking no fucking sides, you know? Uh, uh, Nikki wrote a really interesting thing. I don't it, It's pretty open, open-aired, open and it, it wasn't pointed to anyone in, in particular, but I commend her for her growth as a human, you know, if she actually typed that. <laughs> but uh, we just got to do better, Philly. All right? I'm not even going to crack jokes. There's a bunch of loaded, but I refuse to crack jokes. Okay? This is the real episode. We're going to just talk about real shit, whatever the fuck's on our mind. All I, think, right? I, I think you do got to hand it to Meek for finally coming out and saying, you know, enough with the, the Twitter and the internet and all that shit. If, if, if you want it, see me in person. If not, then just shut up. A little too yeah. late. A little too yeah. late. Um, I'm not yeah. taking any sides. Let's just keep it wrapped. Let's keep it really wrapped because I used to live in South Philly, man. Like, come on. I used to live in West Philly at first. Which was bad, but wasn't as bad as South South Philly is. You know what it is if you've lived there. Um, let's just keep it. Let's keep it respectful and cordial and rap. And we love a good diss and a good beef. But pr- like, how you let an LA nigga come over there and just stir up like chess, not checkers, folks. And beans, you can't say chess, not checkers if you look like you're playing chess in certain moments. All due respect. Um, you know, we'll leave that. At that. Uh, so it's been announced that Lady Gaga has, uh, is the performer of the next yeah, Super, Bowl. Super Bowl. I think she deserves it. Yeah. You know? I think, yeah. About she that. deserves it. Yeah. She deserves it. She's a dope, she's a dope artist. She's a dope performer. 
Um, good kudos to you, Gaga. I hope you're going Gaga over that right now. <laughs> Is there anything we can talk shit about? Uh, shit talk. <laughs> no, everything's everything's peachy. I like your shirt. Thank you. Everything's peachy I'm, right I'm now. Feeling like my shirt. You feel like so, you, yes, you like feel like a fucking flamingo. <laughs> it's that hot outside. Oh, it's ridiculous. How do we have this level of heat around this time? How do we even have humidity when we're not surrounded by lakes or swamps? Um, I mean, heat coming off the ocean, I'm sure, uh. this has something to do with it. But also this this very, very thick cloud of smog we have resting over our heads every single day, I'm sure. It's, it's, like, tinta- it's like tainted vagina. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's what this weather feels like. Yeah. It's like smoggy it's vagina. Like three days later, you still got that. You still got the, yeah. It. Maybe maybe three months later. Mm. <laughs> 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 Life lessons. Um, obviously, you know we're unprepared, which is the which is my favorite. Uh, my favorite shit shooting off the hip. Um, kids. Kids, you don't have to read the history books unless you want to progress. You don't have to read the history books on the craft that you're working on. You don't have to read the history books on greater, great folks before you. It's good to just so you can apply lessons learned from their journeys and their conquests and what they built and what they lost. This has nothing to do with the young kids in rap. Um, I do think it's a good thing to know your the people before you. I don't think it's a hindrance to know the people before you. When a lot of the kids, a lot of the cats that I looked up to were coming up, yeah, they pay homage to Rock Kim and and all those great lyricists before them. But you don't feel the clash just because you don't, you know, you, the the time disconnect of when you were born and all that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like it really doesn't. I, I really don't think that's such a criteria as long as you respect. The OGs. And also the OGs, my nigga, stay in your stay in your lean. Like if you're like if you're like fucking Jumanji fucking jungle spider webs with the shit in the corner, it's all good. You've built an amazing legacy. Stay in the corner though. What's ridiculous is when these old niggas come out and slap the younger niggas. Like, nigga, nobody slapped you when you had some terrible bars. We let it slide. Relax. I think it's a it's, it's an amazing thing to see the shit change hands. I'm not one of those dudes. Ah oh, man, what the fuck? Am I? No man, you had your dance, you dance, and you let the younger people come in and they do their dance. And if they invite an old nigga like yourself to the dance, then you cool. You know how to play, my nigga. Stay next to the Kool Aid. Don't holler at the underage girls. That's what hip hop's like to me in, in, in certain places, in certain weird shit. You know what I mean? I am gonna talk shit. It wouldn't be me if I didn't talk shit. <laughs> <laughs> Just not about certain shit. <laughs> uh, let me see what ridiculousness has been going on. Uh, Speaking of Jumanji, I'm tired of all these terrible movie reboots of you can't avoid really, it. really good movies. You just can't. You know, it's, it is, it's been going on since the beginning of time. I know. And every and single stop. one I'm going to have a problem with. I just have a problem with Ben Affleck, period. Ben, open up a Ben and Jerry somewhere in Boston. Yeah. Like, just, we, you've given us enough. Okay? You've given us enough, bro. I respect you, but when you decided to put that cape on, my nigga, you fucked up. And then you committed to the cape for what, 10 years? A long, a long time. You know what, 10 he's, years? He's, he's EP'd in it now, and the writing and the whole thing. Bro, you're going to be like, you're going you're gonna to be as old as like a fucking pharaoh. By the time you shoot the last one, I don't know. I'm not shitting on you. I am shitting on your fucking acting skills, my nigga. Like, what the fuck were you thinking? What were you thinking? Goodwill Hunting 3, 2.5, 2. <laughs> Give me something. I'd rather you play Scarface than to fucking play Batman, bro. Um, I want to catch up on a few things that might be late on. I finally saw Suicide uh, Squad. Yeah, it wasn't as bad as you guys made it out to be. It was bad, but it wasn't that bad. Now, the racial overtones with the crocodile nigga, I don't know. You know what I mean? It is what it is. It's just an attack on melon or whatever. 
But, you know, it is what it is. And the whole BET thing, I'm like, ugh, gross. But it wasn't that bad. You know what I'm saying? I've seen shitty, shitty, shitty films. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Do I want to see a part two? Hell no. Jared Leto's Joker. Yikes. Yeah. Stay to play. You Just did really. my opinion. Yeah. Play a woman again, bro. You're awesome. You know what I mean? Like, you're, you're dope. Play a chick. Mm-hmm. You know, I like you dressed up as a chick. Not in like a weird gay way. Just, you know, you're really good at that shit, my nigga. Like, leave the Joker to the greats. Leave the Joker to Jack Nicholson and to, rest in peace, Heath Ledger. And to, I guess, if for the old, old folks, I guess the first Joker was played, not the first, but the one from the first TV show was played by uh, Cesar Romero. That's just me yeah. being a Hollywood buff or some shit. But yeah, leave, leave that alone. Even Mark Hamill did a better job, and he's just the voice of Joker. Right? See? Just certain things you got to leave alone. I can't ice skate, bro. I can't. I don't do it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's all. And and (laughs) there's such a weird disconnect between the old niggas and the young niggas. It's like this weird, okay, I'm going to ride with these young niggas, but as long as the old, stay in power behind the scenes. Stay in power behind the scenes. I think I think with that it just it happened too quick. Mm. Where, you know, from Heath Ledger's Joker to, you know, the last live action one, which was Jack, you had that space where, you know, you mean you from the, Jack to you yeah. have the old guys like this one, the new guys like this one. Well <laughs> now with this eight, there wasn't enough time for, you know, ten, fifteen years to pass to create that divide. Or a great enough so actor. Now, or a great enough actor. Well, so now everybody has that op- opinion on both people who they're very, very familiar with. And I love Jared. I love Jared and D- Dallas Buyers Club. Oh yeah. Hint, hint. Um, but yeah, I don't. I don't like you. I don't like you as a Joker. And that's just me and my personal opinion. It just felt like he was like he was trying to be Fetty Wap or Gucci Man. How do you go from explaining yourself, nigga? <laughs> like, the you whole from- like. The whole like urban mob boss vibe that they gave him, like Fetty's not an urban mob boss. Though. I'm just saying, like with the the face tattoos and like I get it. There Ugh. are versions of Joker that have face tattoos and that kind of stuff, but he wasn't like in the club with gold chains on and you know what I mean, like holding his gun sideways and upside down like a gangster. <laughs> He's more like a a psycho, you know. Maybe not, the, maybe it's for this generation. It's I don't for, know. It's it, for it the was, Chirac it was generation. Very spring breakers for me. Um. <laughs> yeah, the Spring Breakers sucked. Yeah, stop playing. Like, who thinks that movie's good? What the fuck? Why do certain things get a pass? Eh, eh. Mm. It is what it is. But Gucci was dope in it. Um, I still don't like this new Gucci man. I'm glad that you're walking straight. I'm glad that you're damn near vegetarian. I'm glad you don't drink or do drugs. It proves to you that I'm ignorant. I like you ignorant. Okay, I like you almost shooting niggas every day. <laughs> this new PC Gucci man is not for me. But it's okay. I like I like violence. <laughs> <laughs> Educated violence. Um in the sports world. So I was doing some research on Colin Kaepernick's righteous turn, right? Mm-hmm. Um my thoughts on it, I respect anybody taking a stand for the oppressed. Case close. Um, do I think that black lives matter? Of course. Do I think that all, life ma- all lives matter? Of course. Black lives matter more because, well, those are the lives that are getting taken out on camera. So I think that's all that is. It's not a separatist. We don't care about this person or that person. And I'm not with any of those fucking organizations. I'm just, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Um, it's just interesting how shit gets... We're living in weird times. How shit gets pitted against each other. Just be smart. Mm. Being smart isn't as difficult as people make it seem. If you are consuming 18 hours of television, shit, my nigga, if you're consuming six hours of television uh, on a daily basis, well, there you go. You know, you're not going to be able to be smart and utilize common fucking sense. If you're not reading, you don't have to read a physical book. You don't have to read a physical book. You don't have to hold a book, but you have to read consistently. It just helps you. 
I'm just dropping little gems today because I feel like it and I'm not that hot. Just I just think that. you have to interact. You have to get out in the real world and interact with real people. Well, you, that's, an interesting, that's an interesting situation. But if you lived in an impoverished area with very, very limited sources, that's the real world. Well, yeah, it might be more, more dangerous in those parts of the world. But I'm saying as far as getting education from TV shows or movies or stuff like that, that's not the real world. It's fictional. People write that stuff and write those endings how they want them to end. You know, where, in my opinion, you have to get out and interact with real people and actually put yourself in the community. And But that's easier for you to say. True. Now, a person is in, back again to the impoverished neighborhood and urban, urbanites. Um, you can't go to... You, you can't go to fucking the polo lounge and socialize with, with, with the upper echelon. Mm. You can't even go to fucking West Hollywood without, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Without being profiled in some certain way. You can't even go to Silver Lake without being profiled in some certain way. It's like, we're really lucky and blessed in the fact that we don't have to, to, you know what I mean? We're not, we're not sub subjugated to that, to that situation, but it's, it's, it's a really interesting, it's a really interesting, uh, it's a really interesting thing. But at the same time, it's not new. Yeah, yeah. Of course. So it's not going to change. It takes people that are in positions to make some stands. And not to make a stance that's going to destroy your fucking finances and destroy your family. But it makes a stance to, to bring awareness. So in that sense, I, I applaud uh, Colin. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to say it's the woman behind him. Well, I definitely think he's, do- he's going all about it the right way. Yeah. I definitely think the chick he's dating Nessa... Is definitely having some sort of influence in that, They're which is not a good dating thing. Anymore, currently, the he, he it's his ex girlfriend, the one who started him on his whole, you know, really path now. But yeah, they aren't together anymore. Nessa, the the mm-hmm. okay, yeah. But well, I know I know who you're talking about really. Yeah, yeah, that can be looked at in a very interesting way. It can either be looked at in as a as he she enlightened him and left, or she destroyed him and left. I like to look at it as enlightenment. Or I, I mean, I it, to me it looks like he's trying to better himself as a a man in in her eyes, mm. and to where she's like, you know, don't don't talk about it, be about it. And he said, all, all right. Then the money started disappearing, the sponsorships, yeah. and she disappeared too. You think? Hmm. <laughs> I mean, I mean, in in his situation on money though, he has the highest selling jersey in the NFL right now, and a, a jersey which, by the way, has been used as a. As a, they're still uh, buying it as, fl- as floor mats it. in certain places in this country. Those people still have to buy those, actually purchase those jerseys though, and those jerseys are like 110 bucks each. So if you're buying a 110 dollar doormat, who who's makes the those, idiot? Who makes? Oh, of course we know who the idiot Reeboks. is. Who's making a uh, Reebok? So Reebok's seeing the money, not Colin. Um, well, his whatever his percentage is that he gets, because all players, whoever whoever's name is on the back, they get a percentage. He's putting all of that into the community. Uh, Ty Dolla Sign dropped an album last week called uh, Campaign, I think. And I'm going to play a journal off of it called Watching that I like featuring Meek Mill. Um, produced by uh, Charlie Heat and uh, our homie Darnell. Darnell got it. She knows I'm watching. Even Love though that I, record. Yeah, it's a really, 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 really dope record. And Ty Dolla Sign deserves so much success. He's super dope and so fucking underrated. And man, that that beat is just oh my god! It's really, really, really dope. <laughs> uh, so you want to hit me up with the uh, what? What are people saying about the debate? Um, I mean, kind of the the same thing that they've always said. You know, some people feel like Trump won the debate. That's, That's what it sounds like. But you know, on on the other hand, some people look at it as he never let her talk. You know, the the, the statistics are like he interrupted her like. 50 something times throughout the debate and she only interrupted him like 17 times or something like that you know so I just my whole thing on it is I just think people need to let people form their own opinion do the research yourself and form your own opinion on who you feel is the the proper candidate uh, I was having a conversation with somebody who uh, somebody in that the- doesn't apply to us black people no, 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 I'm saying some, some, somebody in uh, uh, this person's family was uh, saying they were voting for Trump because they're about, you know, he's going to do a lot for business, whatever, blah, 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 blah. And 
the person I was talking to was like, well, um, you know, fuck Donald Trump, you know, I'm going to send her all of this stuff, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, well, that's not very fair in a situation like this. I feel like you should give them objective information and let them make the information for themselves because for the amount of stuff, you know, it's politics, for the amount of stuff that you could say bad about Donald Trump, you can find the same amount of bad stuff about Hillary. And so you have to take out your personal involvement when educating somebody else on the situation and let them do their research for themselves. You know, man, stupid people shouldn't be allowed to vote just like stupid people shouldn't be allowed to be cops, policing, civilians, okay? Uh, absolutely. So it's like when you when people say good business like what are you what are, what, what has Trump built on his own that is successful outside of what his father built? Let's really look into shit and when people use the word business like if you really do your homework, which is what you should do when you're making such an important decision, you realize it's just, yeah, they're all candidates and they're all liars and yada, yada. Go with the, go with the lesser of, you know what I'm saying? I, all, all, I, I've, I don't know. I'm, I've, I'm never, I've never been one of those people hmm. who, you know, it's like a, a pick your poison situation. Well, I don't like poison. <laughs> so you're just not gonna pull. I, yeah, that's that's just that's just the 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 kind of person. If I you're am, getting I, tortured I, for like four days straight, you're gonna like poison after that. I, I Cause, you cause know, poison to take you out real quick. I feel like uh, our our current president has has left a pretty big chair to fill. You uh, know, yeah. and I I don't think you know we're gonna see somebody with the positive impact that he's made. Um, but I also feel like it's like, funny what you're saying. Sorry for cutting you off. Um, the, the, the this big chair that he's leaving behind and this positive influence and positive imagery that he's left, motherfuckers still boo him. Oh yeah, well, you know what I'm saying? It just, it just those are called racists. Yeah, and that's the agenda that sucks, and that's why we can't support Trump because he's. It is what it is, man. It's nothing new. It's it's just it's it it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like it is what it is. So it's not anything he created. It's before all that, but it's like. Don't pander on people's fucking fears and hates. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. You know? All right. I, I, I kind of see the, the, the presidency as a master of ceremonies where it doesn't matter which of these two candidates we choose. Whatever's going to happen in the next four years is still going to happen. And Very true. And we don't really choose them. Exactly. <laughs> But still, <laughs> you know, I, 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 I think where we spend all this time and, you know, money and all, and voting for the wrong people, you know, there's plenty more people in Washington who are there for 40, 50 years. You know, all of the Supreme Court justices are in their 70s, 80s who have been there for 30, 40 years. So who have just the same amount of power in our judicial system as the president does. You know, we have these checks and balances, so, but we all look at the president as this big, powerful person. You know, when they're only there for four years, which how much? Four to eight. Four to eight, you know, which how much can, when you look at it in a 50-year span, what really changes within those time periods? Hmm. Very interesting. Um, I'm going to leave some, I'm going to leave you guys with some, with some, uh, some jewels, some jewels, some keys, even. How about some keys. Um, yes, shit's been fucked up for black folks forever, for a very, very long time. Never forget. But if we stay there, you can't progress. But never forget. So, what I'm saying is this whatever you do in life, there's going to be millions and millions of no's. If you stay on path and stay on course, no, 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 you're not good enough. You're not worthy enough. No, you suck. No, no, no. I've heard at least a million. No, 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 not good enough. Not, not right enough. No, sorry. We don't want him in the room. Yada, yada, yada. When you get those yeses, make them count in your life. Make them count. The less talking you do about what you do and what's going on in your life, 
the less you have people prying in. And those people can be anything from snakes, yada, yada, yada. So move wisely, move silently. And don't ever underestimate your relationships. All you have in this shit is relationships. And if your relationships fail you, those are not relationships. Those are relationships that are not equal based. Those are relationships with somebody probably taking advantage of you. But your real, your real relationships in life, always make sure you cherish those and always make sure you take care of those. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's another jewel. That's another fucking key. And the smartest man in the room isn't the loudest. The smartest man in the room knows he's never the smartest man in the room because there's always something to learn. Think before you do. Simple as that. I'm African and I know how to deal with police. Yes, sir. No, sir. It sounds like some slave shit. And it is some fucking slave shit for some nigga that's not as educated as me or is not as smart. But every cop isn't the same. You know what I mean? There's a bunch of racist assholes out there. And you got to be very follow protocol when you deal with that shit. Okay? Um, And there's some really good ones to get a bad rap for all the bad ones. So you can't, you know. But for... For minorities, or just people, because uh, an autistic six-year-old kid, just white boy, just got shot by a cop. Just be extra, extra careful. Let him, like Steve Harvey said recently, let him know every move you're about to make if you get pulled over. Don't play that macho, stupid sovereign. Uh, my windows up. I ain't gonna turn them. Th-. Don't play yourself. Yes, sir. No, sir. Voice like the way I'm talking to you right now is how you do it. No matter how in the right you are. Because life, you only have once. You know what I'm saying? So be very, very careful. Very, very careful. And for people of color, our kids shouldn't be playing with BB guns. And that sucks, because I played with BB guns as a kid. Huh. No BB guns, no fucking, no guns. Mm. And that sucks, but that's what it is. You have to be proactive. I don't know why I'm in this positive spirit today, but you guys are hope. Well, it needs yeah. a little positivity, Sean. Well, it needs a little bit of positivity. I wanted to talk so much shit, but my spirit isn't in that mood today because we're in some shit, and it's going to get worse. That's what people don't get. They don't understand. Like, don't be fooled by what you see on TV. Don't be fooled by, don't be fooled by the fucking the, the, the smoke and mirrors, man. The fact that they just put a federal ban on body armor to let you know. Bro. Man, it's about They said fine, we can't take away your guns. We will take away what protects you from guns. It's scary. And there's no way to run. It's all, you know what I mean? So it's 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 a very interesting time. It's just a time to do more reading. You know what I'm saying? I understand the escapism aspect of like watching certain shows and I fall victim to that and I have and I enjoy it. But I haven't really been watching TV since since I've been back and I really never really was much of that. It's just a, it's a good thing to do with your spouse, your family, but read, read really about what's going on. Read through shit. Don't accept everything. You know what I'm saying? Just in life. Don't accept, Oh, this is a no. Doesn't mean you can't make it. You know what I'm saying? But also know when the fucking game's over, <laughs> like my nigga, you know what I'm saying? Do it when it's over. And when you have a family at stake, any, your personal shit goes way in the backseat to the needs of family. So that's all I'm saying. You know, um, if you're in a situation where you tried, sincerely try to get jobs like a hundred times and they won't give you a job, you got to do what you got to do. You know what I'm saying? And I understand that. You don't have to flash it though. But know the consequences that comes with everything. Like I tell you, I can't stand a snitch. Like if you go into something... And it's whatever it is. It's not morally right. It, it It's, you know, the consequences. So when you get caught up in that situation, you got to wear it. So maybe the smartest move would be just not to put yourself in that situation. Snitches are always the one that talk the most, the toughest guy in the room. I know this because I've been through it a few times in my life. I've never ta- tattled on anyone. I've, I don't even speak that language. You know what I'm saying? And I also don't commit crimes to put myself in a situation or any of that shit. But when we were younger and wilder, 
it's always the loudest motherfucker, the tough guy. Telltale sign, those are never the tough guys. Use your brain. You'd be surprised. Like, book education, fuck book education. Just read the books. Read the books. You don't need the debt. After high school, I really, really don't, you don't need the debt after high school. After high school, go into the real world, try to get a job, or fucking go work for UNICEF, go to some third, do something, get get some traveling in paid for. Before you decide, okay, do I want to go into college for, for four years or more? Because it literally seems to me that that college education for about 90% of most uh, graduates, completely useless. You know what I mean? Anyway, it's been a good day. I would play some Black Moon in honor of this Black Moon tonight, but we're going to end it off on some Signal Hill.